Platon Wants, it's such a pleasure to talk with you here at the South England Conference Session in Colchester, England. Yes. And you have been the guest speaker, the devotional speaker, to mm. help keep things spiritual here at the session. Mm. How do you feel it's gone to begin with? I think the conference has gone well in the sense that uh, the, the saints and the decision makers worked together and uh, I guess they made the best decisions in the interest of the community of believers. Uh, there was fairly good engagement from the constituency and uh, very active participation. Coming to the end of it all, I see that the hand of the Lord was with us. You love the church, don't you? You've served the church yes. for so many years. How many yes. years is it? 43 years I have served this church and the Lord. And the Lord. Yes. Tell me about the joy of service. You know, I could not have asked for any other path in my career than the path of being a minister and also an educator. Uh, you know, there's something about the Lord Jesus that nothing else can do. Uh, when I look at the, the fact that there is no permanency in life. There is no permanency in life. Brings a craving in me of wanting somebody that can give me permanency of life. And that I only find in the Lord Christ Jesus. One of the values of the South England Conference is growing disciples. Can we talk about discipleship in the context of learning? You know, one of the interesting things about discipleship, particularly in the 21st century, is the ability to bring the, uh, the mandate of our Lord, the intent of our Lord Jesus into today's world. For example, and I'm particularly very, very, um, I love the fact that the Lord said, I will not leave you as orphans. He said, I will be with you. The question is, what does it mean for the Lord to be with us? He was with the apostles in the first century. But we are living in a time of not only internet, but artificial intelligence, a totally new world. How does the Lord manifest his life in and through us today? What I see is the Lord is able to do that because he doesn't look for forms. He looks for values. He looks for kindness. He looks for love. He looks for, for meeting one another's needs. And even in today's society, we have the opportunity to let Jesus reflect his image through us. The church is buffeted by one problem after another. Mm -hmm. Another problem comes along yes. like a bigger wave than the last one. Yes. The church. <laughs> How do we cope? How do we deal with it? The church exists in society. The church has always been and it, it, it anticipates to go and live in the heavenly kingdom where there are angels only and righteous people only. But the Lord chose that the, world, the church exists in the society in which it is. The question is, can we escape the issues of the society? No, we can't. We can't because we draw our membership from the society, from the communities. So the issues that impact the communities, the rights that the communities are advocating for, be it human rights, rights for women, rights for children, those are the people we invite to the Lord to come. And as a church, we've got to know, Christ Jesus spread his hands, come unto me, all ye that are heavy burdened, and you'll find rest in me. I think people need to find rest in the church. And that's just how we will be. And until the Lord has come, the church has to learn to, keep, to serve both as the salt 
as well as the light. The salt in that we have to be part of society to impact society. And the light in the sense that we've got to give the heavenly values to the world. The Lord Jesus has been on your journey with you for many, many years. <laughs> What's it been like in relationship with him? Oh, he's, I have found him to be a forgiving God. When I look at my life and how I have not lived up to the ideal all the time, and the ideal is very difficult to define. You know, sometimes I find a person on the streets who doesn't have much as I have. And I ask myself, Lord, to what extent do you want me to get involved in this person? And sometimes when I respond to people, I ask myself the question, did I respond with grace enough? Not necessarily that they agree with me, but grace enough for them to know I respected them. And I find the Lord to be a forgiving Savior. I also find him to be one who is an ever-empowering God to do ministry. I have found in ministry that the Lord Christ Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit is so important, both to give the deepness of the impression of the word of the Lord, as well as to keep heaven in my heart. Jesus is a friend. When I get to heaven, and I know I will because he loves me, I want to see the face of Jesus. Pastor Mansa, thank you for sharing with Trans-European Division News. We are blessed. Thank you. Thank you.